Now, the last thing I want to point out is that our model here with that technology pack that comes with the 10 inch screen also comes with a 10 inch something. Digital instrument cluster. God. <laughs> This is the new BMW 1 Series, and it was the most controversial car BMW had ever made until the 4 Series arrived quite recently with its gawping grille. That's because the 1 Series is now front-wheel drive, a layout that BMW once thought was the work of Satan, but it's now come round to the idea because it frees up a bit more space in the cabin. So is the new 1 Series better off now that it's switched to a more conventional layout, or has it lost its USP over rivals the VW Golf and the Mercedes A-Class. Some of you may have noticed that the 1 Series looks completely different to the old model. It looks bigger, taller and dumpier. But it's actually a trick of the eye. The reason is, is that BMW has moved its engine from being long ways to being transverse and that's freed up more space in the cabin so you've got a bigger cabin section and a shorter bonnet it is actually a little bit bigger than the old model too when we first saw the one series grill it looked absolutely huge but then the seven series turned up and took things to another level and then we had the four series earlier this year and wow that really isn't a pretty looking thing so the one series grill looks pretty dinky in comparison it's almost completely blocked off as well. So if I put my fingers through here, all you get is a big plastic guard. This model right here is the 118i M Sport, and that comes with a body kit with a reworked front end with a slightly goofy looking smiley face. It kind of looks like someone putting their fingers in their mouth. You've also got lower skirts down the sides of the car and a reworked back end with a small boot spoiler. Cars today are all made to such a high standard, but you'd be surprised of how many cheap cars from premium manufacturers seem to slip through quality control. And that's what makes the new One Series so impressive. It seems as though every surface that you touch is built to the highest standard and feels just as good as models that are higher up BMW's lineup. In this 118i M Sport model, you've got leather on pretty much every surface. So I've got it here on the steering wheel, I've got it on the armrest, I've got it on the seats, and I've also got it here on the doors. And whatever isn't leather is a soft touch surface. So I've got a soft touch surface here on top of the dashboard, on the bottom here as well. There aren't really many any cheap plastics, and the ones that are here you either won't see or you're never going to touch. Storage wise, you've got two decent sized cup holders down here and there's a USB port in the center for charging up a phone. Under the armrest, you've got a decent sized storage bin that can either fit a chunky wallet or a, an extra phone. And there's a USB-C port in there as well. If those charges weren't enough, there's a little cubby down here where you can wirelessly charge your phone. But it also acts as a wireless connection for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. All you have to do is connect your phone up through either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Finally, we've got a nice big cup holder down here in the door bins. All models come with a 9-inch infotainment screen, but this one here has got a technology pack on it, which increases the screen size to 10 inches. And it's also a slightly sharper display. If you go for this model here, you get the latest version of BMW's iDrive. But if you go for the 9-inch version, it comes with the previous edition, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But anyway, the system here is really slick to use. It's nice and swish. And iDrive in general is one of the best infotainment softwares on the market. Now, if you don't like the system, you could always just use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Now, in the past, BMW used to charge you for that on a yearly basis, but they realized that was a dreadful idea, and now it comes bundled in for free. The last thing I want to point out is that with the technology pack that also includes this 10-inch infotainment screen is also a 10-inch digital instrument cluster. Now, this really is a must-have option. I believe on this car, it's about £1,300, but it 
swaps out the old analog dials and replaces it with a purely digital system. The best thing about it is that when you're driving along, you can actually see the sat nav in the center of the display, so you don't have to keep looking over to the dash. In the back of the One Series, and admittedly, it's a little bit cramped back here. So I'm 180 centimeters and I've got some extra room to go, but if you're six foot, it might feel a little bit cramped back here. And the same goes for legroom. I've got the driver's seat in my position and I've got a tiny amount of room, but it is a little bit tight. You do have the back of the seat sculpted out, so you've got a bit more room, but you have to keep your legs together to make the most of it. If you're sat in the center, there is quite a chunky transmission tunnel, so you might have your legs up back behind your ears. Uh, but if you're not sat in the center, you do have an armrest that you can pull down with two cup holders. If you're wanting to install a child seat, it couldn't be more simple. You've got two isofix points at the bottom of the seat and they're hidden behind little plastic caps. Uh, and finally, you actually have some USB connectivity down here because there are two USB-C charging ports. Open up the One Series Power Assisted Boot. And you'll find 380 litres of storage, which is 20 more than you get on the previous model. It's also a little bit bigger than a Mercedes A-Class, but crucially, it's one litre smaller than a VW Golf. Sorry, BMW, I'm uh, going to have to mark you down for that one. Not good. The 118i comes with a 1.5 litre three-cylinder petrol engine, which sends 158 brake horsepower to the front wheels through either a six-speed manual or seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox. But that isn't the only motor you can choose when specking a new One Series. Joining the 118i are a set of four diesel engines. These are badged the 116D, which produces 114 brake horsepower, the 118D and the 120D, with 148 and 198 bhp outputs respectively, and a 120D xDrive which sends power to all four wheels. If you want a motor that justifies the M Sport name, then go for the M135i xDrive, a four-wheel drive super hatch that gets a bigger two-litre four-cylinder motor, not the throaty straight six available in previous versions. It does, however, put out an impressive output of 302 bhp and can hit 62 miles per hour in 4.8 seconds. The cheapest One Series on offer is the SE at £25,005 and it comes with goodies such as LED headlights, automatic air conditioning, keyless ignition, front and rear parking sensors and real-time traffic updates. Upgrade to the £26,005 Sport model and you'll get mood lighting, sport seats and automatic dual zone air conditioning. The £27,805 M Sport gets a dynamic look with a more aggressive front end as well as 18 inch alloy wheels, M Sport suspension and a heated steering wheel. Finally there's the M135i which costs nearly £10,000 more than the 118i M Sport. However, not only is it much, much faster, it's also four-wheel drive and comes with a digital instrument cluster as standard. So the big question people will be asking now is, does the One Series suffer now that it's front-wheel drive? And I can honestly say that it's noticeable, but it really doesn't ruin the drive whatsoever. The way that it's noticeable is if you put your foot down, you can feel the front end pick up quicker than the rear. Now that's more noticeable from someone like me where I spend a lot of time driving cars and I enjoy driving cars but for the everyday person that's just going to pick up a BMW I can't see it being a big problem. Of course cars today are incredibly planted. They don't feel lively like they may have done 10, 20 or 30 years ago. So if you've got a rear wheel drive car now you'll only really notice it if you're putting your foot down and you're trying to go fast. It's the same with a front wheel drive car. The only time you really notice that you're driving a front wheel drive car is if you pin the throttle and pull out of a junction. Yeah, it's very hard to tell the difference between this and a four wheel drive car. The front end is just a little bit more lively than you would get in a four-wheel drive car but it just feels planted you're only really going to notice that difference 
if you're going really fast. And let's face it, most BMW drivers, or should I say BMW 1 Series drivers, are unlikely to be doing that. So if the front wheel drive layout hasn't really had an impact on the way the 1 Series drives, what about the shift to a three-cylinder engine? Bear in mind, a lot of the 1 Series range is made up of this three-cylinder motor that comes from Mini. Now, three-cylinder motors can be quite clunky, quite clattery, and a little bit gutless, but this is one of the best hatchback motors I've ever come across. It's really responsive, so as soon as you put your foot down, the car immediately launches away without a hint of turbo lag. It's also very refined at low speeds, so if you're cruising around, there's no clattering when the start-stop kicks in, nor is there that general feeling of having a lack of puff when pulling away from a set of traffic lights. It's very, very smooth, and importantly, it's really quiet. The only time you'll really notice that it's a three-cylinder is when you put your foot down and you kind of get that three-cylinder burble come through a little bit higher up the rev range. Performance is pretty good too. You've got 138 brake horsepower under the bonnet of this model, and while it's not a full fat M Sport, it kind of looks like one, but it doesn't really behave like one, it feels fast enough. It's not hot hatch, but almost warm hatch territory. You'll never be left wanting when you put your foot down on the accelerator. But those are the boxes that you expect BMW to tick. It's fast, refined, and it handles really well, despite now being a front-wheel drive car. But what about the important stuff? Ride comfort, we're running on slightly bigger wheels at the moment, but it's still very impressive. On some rural roads, it can feel a little bit jiggly, but nothing that you wouldn't be able to live with. I think if you're going for something that looks like an M Sport, you've got to expect it to feel a little bit unsettled on uneven roads. I pointed it out earlier when we were going through the car's interior, but it is just such a lovely place to be in here and spend a lot of time. We've been doing, again, what we usually do, a mix of motorway miles and also some rural roads, and it just feels so immensely well put together and plush and premium, and you don't always get that at this end of the market. I would say my one and only gripe, and it is a very small one, and it's almost going to sound like nitpicking when I say it, but the steering wheel just feels a little bit on the thick side. So you don't have the nice grips around the wheel like you do on something like uh, a VW R-Line product or an S-Line from Audi. It just kind of feels a little bit on the, the chunkier side, which doesn't seem to work very well with BMW being what a performance brand, especially if you get something that says it's an M Sport. But that really is nitpicking. If you're just cruising along a motorway, you won't really notice. It's only when you're going about towns or on some twistier roads, or if you're a car person like me and you like enjoying a set of B roads, then you might notice it. But while the 1 Series has turned its back on the rear wheel drive formula, it is still a driver's car. Just because it's a new car doesn't mean that you have to pay new car prices. You can head over to yesauto.com to check out all the latest deals on a new and used BMW 1 Series. And why not subscribe to the channel for more in-depth reviews like this and some more ridiculous ones.